In today's tutorial, we're going to discuss custom controls in JavaFX. We're going to go over what a custom control is and why you might want to use one. Then we're going to talk about how you would actually create a custom control. And after we go through a simple example, then we'll go through how you would load that custom control in Scene Builder and use it in your application. So let's get started. So what is a custom control anyway? A custom control is simply a reusable control that extends or enhances default capability. For JavaFX purposes, this control must extend from the pane class, and it really should contain an empty constructor. So what would be an example of a custom control? Here we would have a plain text field where the user might enter some values. But say, for example, you wanted to do some validation on the data, and you might want to reuse that same data validation in numerous places. So in this case, you might say, well, I would like a text field that only accepts integer values with no special characters or anything or, um, or letters. So you might create a custom control that does the data validation behind the scenes, and then alerts the user when they input something incorrectly, like we have here. So this type of control might be something that you would want to save and use off multiple times throughout your application, and this would be an example of a custom control. It takes a default capability, a text field, and it adds some additional capability to it, the data validation, and then it prompts the user to correct action. So this is a very common example, and what we're going to do today is we're going to go over a little more interesting example um, on how you can create custom controls and use them in JavaFX for yourself. So the first thing that we need to determine for our custom control is what we want our desired functionality to be. So for this example, what I would like is I would just like an arrow, very similar to what I can do in PowerPoint here that I can duplicate easily and that I could perhaps change the color of the arrow and I'd like to be able to also uh, rotate it to various um, angles and also maybe scale it. So very simple to what uh, we can do here pretty easily in PowerPoint but this functionality um, doesn't exist by default in JavaFX. So today we're going to go over how you would do this um, through using a custom control. So we're going to start our, our arrow building in Scene Builder. You'll see many examples of custom controls where everything is done inside of the Java class only. However, for the purposes of actually building out controls and getting the placement correct, I much prefer to do things in the FXML using Scene Builder. So in order to do this um, arrow, what we're going to do is we're going to start using the uh, shapes and we're going to build our arrow inside of a pane. And we're just going to make this very simple. We're going to have a line. And now we're going to give our line some width to it. And we're going to change the color from black to, say, red. And now we need a point on our arrow. So we're going to make a, a triangle here. We'll make it the same color, red. And obviously we need these to be attached to each other, so I'm just going to attempt to grab our arrow here and put it next to our line. And we need to match them up, so I'm just going to play with our layout here. And our arrow's a point here is a little bit too big, so I'm just going to scale it down. Let's see how that looks. That's a little bit better. Uh, our tail is a little too long, so let's see if we can make it shorter. All right. Let's 
sometimes building stuff in scene builder is a little tedious, but it's much better than trying to do all this stuff by hand. All right, so now that we have our basic arrow here, we need to um, make the pane as small as possible because the size of this pane is going to dictate the size of our custom control. Um, so we don't want it any bigger than necessary. So I'm going to take my arrow, put it up, up to the very top left corner here, and now I'm going to adjust my pane size to be the minimum size possible. Okay, so now that we have our arrow, now we can work with using it in our Java classes and creating a custom control out of it. So now we're in IntelliJ looking at our arrow.fxml and you'll see here that this is the specific definition of the layout of the arrow that we created. Be sure to create an FXID for each of the components that you would like to manipulate in your custom control. And then as usual, we will have a controller associated with our FXML file where we access the exposed widgets and we give them public getters so that our custom control can manipulate them. So the next step now that we have our arrow that defines our FXML and our controller that allows us to access it is we actually need to build our, our custom control. So the next thing we need to do is to create our custom control. Here we have created a Java class named custom arrow control. And remember I said in order to create a custom control, all you have to do is extend from pane. So we're going to extend from anchor pane. And that's it. Now we have a custom control. But of course we're not done. So we need to create a, a public constructor. And remember I said it's best if this is an empty constructor. The reason is if it's not, if you do not have an empty constructor for your custom control, then scene builder can't load it. And obviously we want to use scene builder. So um, the next thing we need to do is uh, not forget about our parents. So we should call super. And then obviously we need to load our arrow. Um, this is very similar to uh, how we've done things in the past with a few interesting examples or exceptions. Um, let's go back to our arrow.fxml for just a moment. And you'll notice here that we do not define the controller um, in our fxml file like we would normally do. This is important um, for the purposes of custom controls and loading it into scene builder. Uh, again, you have to kind of um, make some concessions here and you cannot load uh, the controller in your FXML if you want to go this custom control uh, route. So uh, we're going to hook up the controller and the FXML file manually. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create an arrow control here in our .java class. And um, so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and load our uh, arrow um, fxml. Now we've done this before. Okay, so the next thing we need to do in the order really matters here. Controller equals new arrow controller. And actually need to, this is also very important, we need to hook up our fxml to the controller before we load it. So we're going to set the controller to controller. Again, order is really important here. Um, and then we're going to do the loader.load. .load. Now obviously we've loaded it but it's not attached to our scene. So we've loaded the fxml into our custom control but he's not actually going to be displayed. Remember, this is a pane. This is an anchor pane. 
So what we need to do now is we need to load our arrow into the pane so it can be displayed. So what we'll do here is this dot get children and we'll add uh, we needed to add we needed to load our fxml into a node otherwise we can't add him. Um, so then we'll add the arrow into um, the anchor pane and now we have now we have our anchor pane with the arrow but we haven't exposed anything so let's do that next so what we'll do is we'll do data binding of our arrow um, color property and we'll be able to manipulate that now in scene builder so the way that this is going to work is we're going to use our controller to get the line then we're going to get the fill property which is the color of the actual inside of the line and we're going to bind that to our arrow color and similarly for the arrow part which is a polygon it doesn't have a fill property it has stroke and bind it to the color now we still need to expose the color um, as a public property so that we can manipulate it so now what we've done and now we could add other properties as well um, such as scaling translation anything that you might want to manipulate on our arrow but for now just for an example all we're going to do is the color um, and what I'm in order to make this um, accessible in scene builder this actually needs to be created into an executable jar that you can load in um, I'm sure there's other ways to do it but this is the way we're going to show today so in order to do that I have created um, this application such that it will generate an executable jar when it is built um, include in project build and it's going to create this custom controls dot uh, jar uh, every time we build this so if I just put, push the build button here you'll see in my out directory um, here I have a custom controls dot jar so we need that for our next step so okay before I show you scene builder I want to show how you would use it just normally um, in your application so here we have just a plain um, anchor pane and when you bring this when you run this file you'll see there's nothing there's nothing here we have an empty window and we can add our arrow to the scene now um, just by importing our custom control and and using it so here we have custom arrow control And that's it. We've added him to our scene now. So let's see what he looks like. We have an arrow. So that's really, um, now we can use our custom arrow control just like any other control or widget. And next step is I'm going to show you how to import him into Scene Builder and um, get all the benefits that you have uh, using that tool. So the last thing to do is to actually import our custom control into scene builder and to do that we're going to use a little gear icon up here we're going to go to jar fxml manager we're going to add library fxml from our system we need to import the jar that we created with our custom control I just happen to know where it is this is our custom control jar that contains our arrow now it's going to load this window. If you do not see a visual representation of your custom control in this window, then that means it is not loaded correctly and something is wrong. However, uh, we do see our little arrow here and everything's fine. Now we're going to go ahead and import this component. It is worth noting that if you change this custom control, if you go back and modify this arrow, you will need to recompile the jar and reload it into the scene builder in order for those changes to be picked up. So now you'll see in the custom section here we have our custom arrow control and we can add this to the scene just like any other widget. 
So now we have our arrow in the scene. I'm going to make the scene a little bit bigger. Um, if we click on this, you'll see in the properties section that I can now manipulate the color. This is the only property that we had exposed in our custom control. But if we had added others, they would also show up in here. So here we can change the color of our arrow. We can also duplicate our arrow, so I can create another arrow and add it to the scene. And now you're starting to see the real benefit of having this as a custom control. Instead of a line and a polygon that I now have to manipulate individually, I can go in the layout section here and I can scroll down to the rotate section and I can actually move this arrow as a complete unit and now you'll see that I could easily duplicate this and manipulate these arrows throughout the system. I can also scale it as a whole unit so if I wanted this arrow bigger I can do that. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of the types of things that you can do with custom controls. Again, I did not put any additional logic um, in my custom control, but you could certainly have arrows or um, custom controls that are um, have additional capabilities or functionality inside of them. And you could also build out more components together. So I could have an arrow that had text inside of it, for example. Um, and so this is all I want to go over today with custom controls. Uh, this was a pretty in-depth tutorial and I hope you got value out of it.